Hi, in this video I would like to explain the concept very clearly for moment of inertia and how to derive the equation for the moment of inertia of a rod. You can see a rod that's rotating about a perpendicular axis and uh, the rod itself could be of a rectangular cross section or a circular cross section, that doesn't matter. And on the rod I have marked out a couple of uh, small areas in different colors. Those are there to denote an infinitesimal mass dm of a width dx and at some radius from the axis. We will get into the integration details later, uh, but right now you can get a feel of the rotation. So moment of inertia depends on what's the shape. Is it a rod, a ring, or a disc, a ball, and so on? How is the mass distributed? Is it uniformly throughout the rod? In this case, it is uniform. And the third question is, where is the axis of rotation? Is it perpendicular to the rod? Is it along the length of the rod? And so on. Having said that, uh, if you look at a general case where the axis is uh, vertical, shown by the yellow dotted line, and there is a mass that's uh, there at a radius r from the axis, perpendicular to the axis, then i is equal to mr squared. Here is a side view of the rod showing the small point mass in red color, dm. It's got a width dx and it's located at a radius x from the axis. There are many such point masses throughout the length of the rod and what we are going to do is to integrate the moment of inertia for all of them. So you have dm, dx and x and the first job is to find the moment of inertia for this small mass dm. Only then we can integrate for everybody else. So fix a mass per unit length thing called m by l. That is very useful because that will enable us to fix the mass of that element of length dx. That will be m by l into dx. Inside the integration, moment of inertia would be 0 to l, dm into x squared, like mass into r squared, mr squared. Here we have x instead of r. And the limits are 0 to l because the axis is considered 0 and l is the outermost edge of the rod. So 0 to l, m by l dx into x squared. So you can take out m by l outside the brackets. You will get x cubed by 3 as a result of the integration, 0 to l. And that will give you m by l into l cubed by 3 minus 0. Therefore, i is equal to ml squared by 3. So this is the moment of inertia for the same rod rotating about the axis that we showed in the sketch. Now what we will do is we will change the axis and see how the moment of inertia changes for the same rod. Now in this animation you can see the rod rotating around an axis passing through its center. We haven't changed the location of the point masses dm. It doesn't matter because we will merely change the way we do the integration. The point where the axis passes through the rod, we can keep that as 0 and we can keep one end of the rod as minus L by 2 and the other as plus L by 2. That takes care of the length. Then we do the integration as before. Nothing changes in the integration except that the limits will change. Instead of 0 to L, it will be minus L by 2 up to plus L by 2. Doing that, you will get I is equal to ML squared by 12. You can see the detailed steps uh, in the screen. You can notice that for the same rod, the moment of inertia has reduced a lot from before. It's just like saying that twirling a pen in your hand about its center, it's easier than twirling a pen about its edge. I hope this video was uh, useful for you. Thanks and have a great day.